This is Dharmi Kam Ashram, home to the Indian School of Martial Arts in Kerala. Headman here is Guru Balachandram Nar. I've come here to learn something about Kalaratapi art, which is supposed to be the origin of all Eastern martial arts. I'm really looking forward to seeing the Guru's version of Kalaratapi art, which he claims is the genuine article. The mother of all martial arts. Kalarata Piyat, legend has it, was taken by the Buddhist monk Dharmo on his pilgrimage from India to the Shaolin Temple in China. From this, Kung Fu was born. And I'm told that this gym is where I'll find the original and pure art unadulterated by any other modern martial art. Yeah, my interpretation looks very much like Shaolin. So you can see where the connection is between this art and the Shaolin so, art. That's, that's good. This particular demonstration of Kalarata Piyat is nothing like the Kalarata Piyat I'd seen in the past. It's just too similar to modern martial art forms to be the genuine article. I expected to see the raw versions of Far Eastern martial arts, but instead what I did see was some well choreographed copies of Aikido, Karate and Kung Fu. I suspect this version of Kalarata Piyat is not what he says it is. It's so similar as well to the Chinese forms that I've seen in China. You know, the movement is so similar. Faster and better. Mentioning these over-striking similarities makes the master moody, and so he shows me some of his best moves. Let's watch this. No, no, that's all right, don't worry. Just relax. Relax. Oh. I'm being a wheelchair now, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be wheeling me out of here in a wheelchair? No. <laughs> he broke my neck. We are healers. We are healers. That's enough to break your neck and yeah. finish you off. Okay. But instead of that, I'm, what I'm doing is you're hitting me. I'm moving out, I'm holding you here, breaking up, bringing you here. If I want, I can finish it like this. Oh, damn. That's quite nasty. Not convinced I'd witnessed the original form of Kalarata P. Art, I'm keen to understand more about the master's view of his art and his status. Yeah. It's very easy for me to drop you. What I get is a rather bizarre claim yeah, yeah, about the lengths to which his disciples will go for him. Yes. Yeah. Now, simple thing, if I ask the, this boy to climb on top, and jump. Yeah. He will simply do it. That's the command, that's the respect, that's the devotion, that's the dedication for the art and for the teacher. What about the relationship between a guru and a disciple? How, it's like how a sacred father, is that? You know, it's very simple. A guru is supposed to be a, a father, a brother, an uncle, a guide, he's a philosopher, he's a priest, he's a doctor, everything for the disciple. Watching some disciples meditate, I get to thinking about gurus and masters. This particular guru seems to have an exceptionally large ego. He may well be a father, brother, uncle, doctor, philosopher and priest to his pupils, but he also projects himself as having godlike qualities. And that's not something I'd look for in a master from whom I wanted to learn.